Hello and welcome back to episode 11 of the Alpine F1 Manager Career Mode. We're back today for the Austrian Grand Prix. And if you haven't seen it, go back and watch the British Grand Prix in the last episode. I'll leave a link up in the top right corner for it because it was quite the phenomenal episode. And now's your last chance. Esteban Ocon. Got himself on the podium, finishing in second place. An unbelievable race that has turned the tables in the Drivers' Championship. He's jumped up above Alonso. And also, we have closed the gap in the Constructors' Championship on Mercedes just ahead of us by 10 points now. So it is going to end up very tight between us. Other news, after the race, we will have a new regulations vote. So we'll let you know what that's going to be once we get to it. And hopefully we might even throw in the results as well, because I think it normally takes a week to come in. So we'll we'll do both of those. Obviously, at this point, we can't check exactly what that's going to be. Car development wise, we are just waiting on a new front wing and underfloor to come in. But they're still going to be a couple of races away. I think they would be coming in at just after the Hungarian Grand Prix, I believe. So we don't know exactly what we'll be having on the car by then but now it's time for the austrian grand prix we're gonna go jump in and i'll see you the other side of practice the battle is surely going to rage this weekend welcome to the green hills of austria the red bull ring hosted its first grand prix in 2014 and it's been spectacular ever since the Red Bull Ring is one hungry beast of a power track. Drivers face a steep climb up to turn three and a fast ride downhill through wide corners and straights thereafter. There's plenty of opportunity to overtake here, especially with the help of three DRS zones. The season is about halfway through and it makes me wonder what else is in store for the teams. Well, there's only one way to find out. So without further ado, let's get started. So we are through practice. First practice session, we had Ocon 11th and 16th. P2, we had Alonso 6th, Ocon in 10th. P3, we had Ocon in 14th, Alonso in 15th. We are now in qualifying. I accidentally didn't have the screens recording, so I missed the original recording of this. So Q1 has gone fine. We've gone through 11th and 12th. We did go out for a second run towards the end. We would have been safe either way. We went out on used tyres, so it wasn't nof nothing to be concerned about. But we're going to head into Q2 now, and given the looks of this, this is where it could start to get a little bit tasty for us. So we are sending them out for another lap on the softs. Again, a used set. We're not too concerned. We've got 8th and 6th at the moment as we send them out. Ocon's kind of towards the middle of the pack here. We will jump on board with him as he comes through He's actually gone orange in sector one, green in sector two. Is Alonso going to do the same? He eventually does. Ocon now, oh, Ocon now coming down the final corner. Goes around it. Joe and Magnussen are the only ones who can cause any trouble to us now. And Ocon doesn't improve. So we're just keeping an eye on Joe. We are... Both drivers through to the next round of qualifying. Alonso crosses the line, stays seventh. And we'll just watch for Joe. He's going to be the last man to cross the line. Can he knock Lando Norris out of qualifying? He can't. Doesn't even improve. So we're on our first flying laps here in Q3. Ocon crosses the line, goes fourth at the moment. And Alonso goes second behind Leclerc. Perez then jumps ahead of Alonso and we've also got Verstappen out on track who's just going out to start his first fastest lap as is Hamilton and Sainz. Verstappen crosses the line, only goes seventh. Hamilton and Sainz are only just starting their fastest lap so Verstappen may have been caught up in a bit of traffic from them perhaps. Sainz goes first, Hamilton goes fourth and Pierre Gasly goes fifth. So at the moment we are sat in 6th and 8th. And this time around, we are the last 
two cars on track. So hopefully this time round we'll see better improvements. Alonso has gone green in sector one. That's a fantastic start for us. Ocon for some reason doesn't have what he's done in sector one. I'm not entirely sure why. Hamilton's the first to cross the line. Doesn't improve. Russell does a little bit and moves up to sixth. Alonso is going to need improving. Ocon goes green in sector two. Alonso does only manage to go yellow. Gasly moves up to sixth. Gasly moves up to fifth. What a lap from P Pierre Gasly. Alonso crosses the line. No, it's Norris has crossed the line. Didn't improve. Ocon crosses the line and doesn't move. Alonso doesn't move up either. Alonso and Russell with exactly the same times there. But we are starting 8th and ninth on the grid, although there's a grid penalty for Lewis Hamilton. So it may well end up being a little bit better. So there's electricity in the air, but there's no surprises in that. It's race day. We didn't see any unexpected prowess from Alpine during qualifying, but they did well for themselves. Everything's still open to them for the race. We saw a reasonable push from Mercedes in qualifying, and they'll have plenty of opportunities here to achieve a great result. And the race will be taking place under blue skies. That means the teams should be able to apply their strategies without any added complications. And Austria is always full of surprises, so who knows what lies in store here at the Red Bull Ring. So we're not expecting any rain for the race. We've actually took their confidence down a little bit when we've made slight adjustments. So we'll revert those. It was just changes to the front wing, of course. Now, where do we go setup wise? I am tempted. Let's have a quick look at if we were to go softs to mediums instead. Can we pull that off with one of our drivers? We quite possibly could. Let's create it on both of them, I think. Just to have a little look at our options. So if we were to do that, who's going to be better off doing it? We know Archon can basically attack on these tyres the entire time. So I think we might go with that little aggressive strategy for him. And then for our Alonso, we'll go a little bit more cautious and go with the medium to hards let's just have a quick look yeah that's going to be our best strategy for Ocon let's see what we can pull off we're actually going to as well favor Ocon going forward this season because I mean he's the driver who's staying so it only makes sense for us to favor him and that's what we are going to do I've made I've made a ruling on that if we're in a position where I feel Alonso is holding up Ocon, he's going to be told to get out of the way. If we're in a position where Ocon's holding up Alonso, it's going to be less easy to get me to move Ocon out of his way. Sounds harsh, but Alonso's not going to be here much longer, so why not prioritise the driver who is? Sunny and bright as the drivers line up on the grid. Looking at Fernando Alonso here. Not as close to the front as they might have wished for, but we know the race order can change a lot during those first few corners. Further back, we've got Esteban Ocon. With a top 10 position on the grid, this race could really go either way for them. The race start is mere seconds away. It's the race we've all been waiting for. It's the Austrian Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. And let's have a quick watch of the battle for first place. Who's going to go into the first corner? In first, it is Leclerc. No, it's Carlos Sainz. Leclerc giving chase. Let's jump on board with Esteban Arcon now. He's side by side with Alonso. And at this stage, this one isn't so much instruction. This is just... Being smart, Ocon's on the softs. There's no point in letting Alonso hold him up when he's clearly on the faster tyre. And we have seen a good start, but 
no positions gained, unfortunately, at this stage. Ocon, with a good first lap, he's kept in touch with Gasly. That's someone that really we should be passing relatively soon. Let's have a quick look at the tyres. Ocon is the only one on softs at this stage of the race. And I would imagine everyone else is probably going either hard to softs or mediums to hards. Whereas Ocon is, we've took a risk with him, going from softs to hard. Uh, we've took a risk with him going from soft to mediums, but let's just hope that it can pay off as DRS comes into play. And we are going to get our first taste of DRS here. However, Gasly also has it. Russell ahead of him has it as well. Ocon <laughs> made a bit of a blunder of that, I won't lie. And yeah, he's kind of messed himself up there. Went a bit too much at that overtake initially. And it just was never going to come off from that far back. And even when it was close to coming off, he backed out of it, which... An odd decision, we could call it. I honestly thought Ocon would have been past at least someone very quickly. Is he going to go past Gasly this time? He is in... No. No, he's not. And Perez has ended up going past Gasly. They're battling side by side. Unfortunately, it meant Ocon couldn't really get involved in that battle. But now, he's going to have another go down the next straight. You can see already, behind Alonso, we've got a big gap behind us. Yellow flags in sector three. I don't think it's anything major. It isn't, because we've carried on. There's no safety car. It's just Albon running wide. It doesn't really matter, does it? We'll carry on and as though it never happened. Hamilton is down in 14th from his grid penalty, so I'm guessing he started probably lower than that. Yellow flag in sector two now. And that is odd. It was Sonoda spinning, so it didn't affect us at all. But as he comes in, I mean, it's not really affected anyone, has it? Uh, the horse has gone. <laughs> He's just drove into him. He's just drove into the side of a car that had spun round. Fair enough. I, I can't, can't argue with it. <laughs> Ocon putting pressure on Perez this time and gets the overtake. Can he finish the job this time? We're going to get him to deploy into the corner. He does get the job done this time. And now he's on the back of Pierre Gasly. This is where we need Ocon to be making the big moves in this race. Once... He, once the, the rest of these guys pit, he's going to have pretty clear air. And we want to try and take advantage of that by not having to push too much. So that he can have even fresher tyres at the end. He's going up the inside of Russell. Is that job done? It is. And he's got Gasly as well. So Esteban Ocon into space in fourth place. Now he needs to push on and make a difference in this race. Alonso is on the back of... George Russell here, he's gone past Perez and he's alongside George Russell and he's past George Russell. Alonso could be joining... Oh, what's happened here? He's ended up alongside Ocon and that's gone a little bit wrong for us. Ocon trying to get... At Pierre Gasly, not able to do so at the moment. We're going to drop Alonso down to aggressive, try and make sure his tyres last. Ocon, meanwhile, his tyres are getting warm. So we're going to drop him down to aggressive as well. And hopefully, we're about to see him get back past Pierre Gasly over these next two straights. He's not going to go for it on this one. This one, surely, he's going to go for it. We can push him up to push as well because he saved a lot of fuel. He's not going for it now. We're going to stick him onto overtake and let him fly past. We've got a crash. It's, it, it's somebody way back. We can't even click on their name. It's Latifi. Oh no, it's Hamilton. 
So Hamilton goes past one of the McLarens. Locks up. Goes really wide. And hits the wall. What has happened to Hamilton? He's still in the race. However, I would imagine... There's got to be damage to his front wing. It doesn't look to be too serious. But I would imagine they're probably going to pit him soon anyway. And now we've got Ocon with a little bit more space ahead of Gasly at the moment. And hopefully, I've said that, and Gasly is flying up the inside of him. Well, we're, we're now going to watch Ocon come back at him and not, not get him. That That's not part of the plan. You meant to have overtook him. We really need Ocon to get past Gasly and just get a bit of space ahead now. And he's not even overtook him down. He's had three DRS straights and didn't get him down any of them. That's a little bit silly, Ocon. He is now past him. We're going to let him carry on attacking a little bit longer. Try and create a bit more of a gap. Alonso is also past. So Alonso, let's tell him to hold back cars. He's gone and got the fastest lap as well. We, we are being a little bit naughty here, if we're being honest. But also, sometimes you've got to look out for the team. And the smart thing to do right now is for Alonso to hold up so that Ocon can pull away. It's controversial. But at this point, I think it's a smart thing for us to do. Having said that, Alonso is constantly on the back of Ocon. And Ocon's kind of bottled it here. We're going to change that plan. Because Alonso's clearly just got the pace for this. Whereas Ocon not quite got the same pace at the moment. So we'll let them battle it out. If Alonso gets past, then Alonso gets past. We keep seeing little yellow flags pop up and disappear. Norris has ran wide on turn six. It's not really a problem for you there. Around this one here, if you don't know where turn six is. I don't know how much you people watch F1. But there we go. Uh, let's have a little look at... So pit windows are nearly ready to open. But not quite there yet. Alonso is now the driver in he ahead. Norris has had a spin and somehow not dropped a position, I don't think. Which is moderately impressive in of itself. It's going to be interesting to see what happens after the pit stops here. Because at the moment, Pierre Gasly is having a wonderful time. He's actually... I don't know what's gone on here, but something seems to have gone on because we're all of a sudden very split up on the track. We are in the pit window for Fernando Alonso. So we are going to be looking at when's best to pit him. Multiple cars have crashed. Let's get him in. There's a good chance that's about to be a safety car. So let's just get him into the pits just in case. But it's going to do no harm bringing him in if there isn't a safety car then it's fine so it's actually it's joe and bottas colliding and as it turns out no safety car but it is what it is we've we've bought alonso in and joe's got a penalty for colliding with his teammate that is pretty funny. Good pit stop for Alonso. And we're going to have the Alfa Romeos pulling off a two stop here. Here comes Bottas. And Joe is literally just having to wait. And now he's got a five second penalty. And now they can work on his car. The amount that they've just compromised their races. Like... Alfa Romeo's race is basically over as a result of what's just happened. Alonso down to 8th after his pit stop. 
he's going to come out ahead of Russell, but behind Gasly. Ocon complaining that tyres are gone. Yeah, copy that. What do we do? That's a bit earlier than we would have liked. Let's have a little look at our options. So 56 laps. We've... Oh dear, we've got 51 laps to go. So decision made. We're going to pit Ocon for the mediums. But we're going to have to tell him to just be less aggressive on them. Because we've actually just missed the chance to pit him. Because it... If not, I don't think they're going to make it to the end. If we have a look at the tyre wear, I mean, it's, it's above what we expected. I think I just... I think, if we're being honest, I think I've just made a blunder. And I thought the softs were going to last longer than they have. And it's just not paid off on this occasion. Russell ran wide on turn six. This was while battling with... Well, I say while battling, he'd kind of gone past him. So Russell went wide and let Ocon back past him. Alonso is in a position now. He's chasing down Pierre Gasly. Let's try just changing him to push. See if he can close that gap a little bit. The, the big problem with the Ocon strategy is the fact that we made a move to go aggressive and we've now ended up Kind of in the same position as everyone else on track. So it's just the fact that we took a gamble and it hasn't paid off at all for us, really. I think this might be kind of where we finish 6th and 7th. We just need to try and hold off Russell behind Alonso. And that would be absolutely fine for us. Because Constructors Championship-wise, we'll just have a quick look. It would mean we actually could jump above Mercedes today. We would be level on points as it stands. But we'd be above them in the championship. And that could, in itself, be huge for us. The Claire locked up going into turn two. We don't know whether that, looking at where he is on track, I don't think that would have affected his race with Verstappen. It looks like he's very much Verstappen and signs for the lead. We can probably move Ocon back up to balance at this stage. Just looking at his tire effect, I mean that's the problem. I think, I think I've spotted the problem with what we've done here. It's the problem of they don't really want to go below this light grey line here. And Ocon was just going past it when he pitted, and they're kind of that's kind of where you start to lose performance from the looks of. From the way that's displayed, that's the impression I get from it. And I think that's what happened with Ocon there. We just pushed him a bit too far. But unfortunately, there's not a whole lot going on in this race. We do now have a Alonso and Russell battle. We're going to put Alonso maybe even too aggressive. Try and help him battle with Russell as Russell does go past him. We've now got Hamilton into the points. So that changes the look of this very much. The gap would now be six points. But Alonso, not going to be done in one go and disappear. He's going to keep battling. The gap to Ocon is now four, three and a half seconds. So he's relatively secure where he is. We just need Alonso to keep position now there's no need for him to go and get involved with uh, Ocon at this stage just keep focusing on your battle with Russell and we'll be fine Hamilton is too far back to really be part of the struggle for these positions but where, where's the pace from Gasly come from it is just crazy how quick he is at the moment being in fifth place he's battling with Perez for position let's just have a quick look we've got yellow flags in sector two nothing too serious however Perez goes back past Gasly 
and Alonso has gone back past Russell. However, that might be about to change here. It does indeed. I think we're going to be seeing a bit of that now where they keep swapping positions. And there it is again. Alonso goes past and Russell doesn't get back past him this time. Approaching the end of the race here, 10 laps to go. All we need really, if, if Alonso can keep battling with Russell like this, hopefully hold each other enough hold each other up enough that Ocon doesn't get dragged back into it because that is the last thing we want. Hamilton's just pitted. So out of the points goes Lewis Hamilton. And let's just have a look. So you've got Norris there. There's the points. That's a that's a big gap. I don't think it, uh, even Hamilton is going to be able to make up that gap. We can push a lot, Ocon back onto standard just to try and help him with this gap behind him. Oh no, he's getting fully dragged into that. Oh no. Ocon is now under all sorts of pressure from Russell and Alonso. Four laps to go and we're going to jump on board. So you've got Ocon back battling side by side with Russell at the moment. He manages to fight him off, but then he instead doesn't manage to drop him into the gr grasps of Alonso. This is where the problem's going to be, is we really need Ocon to push on a bit to try and keep Russell behind, but also we want Alonso to get a chance to go for it. We're going to set him to overtake, see if he can... What's he done there? Oh, he's like... He's letting signs pass at the same time. Oh, no. Disaster here, potentially. Ocon battling with Russell does manage to get the place back. And signs is just behind them, so he's going to have to move out the way for signs in a minute. Just don't let Russell pass when you do. Just don't let Russell pass. He doesn't. Alonso, however, dives right up the inside. That was the outside. What a move from Fernando Alonso. Now he's back into the battle with Russell. And Ocon has pulled away just a little bit. Let's drop down to neutral. And then we might even drop down to harvest down this straight. We're on to the last lap. And let's keep it in harvest. Just let him sit behind. He's, he's gone for it. And now into the corner, hit the overtake. And what we should see is Russell not able to quite get close enough. And that is what we see. Ocon's going to go on to finish sixth place. Alonso should now have secured himself in seventh this appears to be a Williams between us and Ocon. I was very confused because it was two seconds. I'm like, that's that's not a two-second gap, my guy. But it's absolutely fine. Ocon is going to follow the race winner over the line, although a lap down. Over the line they go. And then here comes Alonso to cross the line as well. Sixth and seventh. And we are level with Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship. So, a... Very good race for us, finishing 6th and 7th. Ocon moving up two places, basically swapped with George Russell. It's a shame that we couldn't bring Gasly back towards us. He just kind of pulled away. I think probably just because he was battling with Perez and they were just able to DRS each other away. But nevertheless, a good race for us. And we can't really be complaining about 6th and 7th. We have stay 6th and 7th in the Drivers' Championships as well. With the gap now up to 8 points between Ocon and Alonso. 20 points above us to Hamilton. And 15 points below us to Bottas. Constructors' Championship, as mentioned. We pick up 14 points. And Mercedes pick up 4. Which means, of course, we are now level with Mercedes on points. It's a fantastic race for us overall. It's becoming a fantastic season for us as well. We're at Alpine and we are well and truly battling for that third place. We do have a regulation vote. So what's this? It's 
in the 90s, the top heavy scoring system was used that was only rewarded the fastest time teams and drivers. In the 90s, a top-heavy scoring system was used that only rewarded the fastest teams and drivers. We propose a sporting regulation change back to this vintage scoring structure, but please do review this proposal. So it would be a bonus pole position point. We would keep the fastest lap point and double points for the last race, and then everything else remains the same. You know what? Let's spice it up. Let's vote for it. I normally wouldn't, but double points in the last race. Just think of what that could do in our battle with Mercedes. Why not get on, on it? It could be fun. So we do have the regulation vote results. Let's have a look. And it's it's passed. So we will now have pole position bonus points and double points for the last race of the season as of next season i've just realized so it won't affect the race at the end of this season of course but nevertheless it's it's a bit of bit of a change what what absolute madness that could stir up at the end of next season why not go for it if you have enjoyed that please do leave a like down below let me know what you think we can pull off in the next race, our home race in France. Subscribe if you're enjoying the content and thank you very much for watching.